Everyone who works with sensors, Arduinos and ESP32s should know this circuit. In this video I show you the different solutions to convert logic signals between 5V and 3.3V. I will show you solutions to send signals from a high voltage to a low voltage into the opposite direction and even both directions at the same time. But first, why do we need logic level conversion? Imagine two people trying to communicate. One speaks 3.3 volts and the other speaks 5 volts. Sometimes they're just confused and talk past each other. Sometimes they get lucky and it actually works. And sometimes someone dies. And by someone I mean your microcontroller. You could wish to connect a 3.3 volt sensor to a 5 volt Arduino Uno or a 5 volt sensor to a 3.3 volt microcontroller like the ESP32. Or completely crazy, connect a 5 volt Arduino to a 3.3 volt ESP32. This is our 5 volt system and this is our 3.3 volt system. What is a safe and simple way to get the signal from this side to this side? You take the output and you feed it into a voltage divider and connect that one to ground. And ground is of course the same ground that we have here. So right here, this is our ground signal. 3.3 volts on that one and 1.7 volts on that one. Now that we know this ratio, we can pick resistors, but there is an unlimited amount of resistor combinations that works here. So what should we pick? If we pick resistors that are too small, then there is a lot of current flowing through the resistors. This needs to be kept at the maximum of 20 milliamps. Our output here can only drive 20 milliamps. And I would advise against driving 20 milliamps all the time. This consumes power, everything gets warm, and no, it's just not a great design. If it's not necessary, you know, sometimes it might be necessary. So I would limit the current flow as much as possible. So why not go with very high resistors, right? Why, why shouldn't we pick mega ohm resistors? Well, if the resistors have a very high value, then the problem is you can't send fast signals. And I will explain to you why this happens and how this looks exactly. So we need to find a sweet spot between consuming current and getting things hot and destroying our signal on the other side. So something in between. So I pick two resistors here. This one is a 100K resistor and this one is a 47K resistor. How much voltage do we expect here? We can, we can calculate this if we take 5 volts and we divide it by 47K plus 100 K and then we have to multiply this by 100 K. And the nice thing is we don't have to write K. We can just um, remove all this K's here. It's five times 100 divided by 47 plus 100, which is 3.4, 3.4 volts. Whoops. It's not exactly 3.3, but I'm super happy with it. It's nice for our first test. Of course, we also need to connect ground of both boards. I will connect both of them to my MacBook, so they will be connected anyways, but still we will connect. I connect the top here to my pin 13. This is our voltage output. It's connected to, I will also use pin 13 ground to ground and ground to ground. Now for the ESP32 I will just upload an empty sketch. So this one is an ESP32 S2 and then let's output a signal set pin 13 as output and then set it high and set it low without delay pretty fast, but also very slow at the same time. We can go much faster than that. If you're interested in how you get the most speed, check out this video, it was pretty fun. Pin 13, of course. Awesome. So now it should send the signal. Let's check the signal. All right, so this is our signal. 
we can see something is weirdly jumping around. Well, that is millis, and we're not using millis in this example, so we can disable all interrupts by calling CLI, and then it should stop. Yes, okay, perfect. If you're interested in details about millis, it's a deep rabbit hole. Check out my video about it. This is our five volt signal. One, two, three, four, five divisions, it's five volts. Plus a little bit of overshoot, but what about the other side? Let's check the other side here. This is the other side. And this is a very disgusting signal already. You see that? Why is that happening? Why is it not a rectangle like our input signal here? What happens if we go even faster than that? If I use direct port manipulation to get an even faster signal here, then you see how little of an output signal we get. Why is that happening? It all comes down to capacities. The truth is that we have an output capacity inside of our Arduino. Now this capacity is a parasitic capacity inside of the chip. So there is nothing you can do about it. And it's also not a problem in this case because the transistor is charging and discharging this capacity very quickly. I will go back to the slower signal. As you can see here, there is no charge curve here in blue. So there is no problem, but there is a problem right here. But now how do we charge this input capacity here? Well, we charge it through this very high resistance value here. And there is very little current flow into this capacitor. And it's exactly what we see here. Let's take a look at the data sheet if we, if we actually find something. So if this connection here should transmit data, um, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't pick this resistors. This, this doesn't look good. If this signal gets too ugly, ESP32 might not get the right data. If we look into the data sheet, we see a pin capacitance of two picofarads. So this is, this is our tiny capacitor here that we cannot change. It is inside of the chip and it is being charged by this very high resistance value here. All right, so how can we fix it? We can pick different values. Let's pick a smaller value. Yes, I will use this combination here. My new value here is 150 ohms and 300 ohms. That results in a voltage of 3.33 volts. Great. Our input signal stays the same and this is our output signal. This is a good signal. You see that the alignment isn't perfect. Now they are aligned and you see that the voltage is lower and the signal looks exactly the same. This parasitic capacitor needs to be charged, but it's being charged with a very small resistor. So if we zoom in here, it's actually too much for my poor oscilloscope here. <laughs> That's a great signal. Awesome. But we're consuming more power. How much current is flowing here? Well, the total resistance here is 450. It's 150 plus 300. And so the current equals voltage divided by resistance equals 5 volts divided by 450 ohms. And that is 11 milliamps. That's a lot. Looking at the signal, we can probably pick values in between. Pick something like 1.5K and 3k then this will drop to 1.1 milliamps which is a reasonable amount and the signal will look pretty good but what if i told you there is an even simpler solution to this problem this is already very complicated we can do something as simple as this so we just connect one resistor between these two boards but we need to be careful because in principle, this shouldn't work. In principle, the voltage here will rise to five volts and will potentially destroy this microcontroller. But there is something inside of the ESP that prevents this. That is a protection diode towards the supply voltage. Inside of this chip, there is a small diode on every pin that is connected to 3.3 volts. The question is, will they mention it in the data sheet? I'm not so sure. Let's see. Protection 
no, diet. Hmm. I think I will just find out if there is such a diet. But you need to be aware that this diet is very, very tiny. And this current here should be very, very tiny. So this resistor should be very, very high. I would go with the 47K resistor here. Maybe 10K is also fine. But um, no, make it too small because otherwise this diode will die and then the ESP32 input will die. Or even worse, this 3.3 volts here could be raised. If you push too much current into this supply voltage here, then this will not stay at 3.3 volts. It will go up ground to ground. Awesome. This is our input signal and this is our output signal. It goes up and then the diode prevents it from going further. It looks a little bit higher, so if we measure it, the maximum voltage is 4.08 volts on our input. So um, not great. Now why is it 4.08? Because there is a voltage of 0. I don't know, 7 volts maybe here. That's why. So this point is 4 volts then. With 4 volts, minus 0 0.7 is 3.3 volts. It all checks out, but this also means that the input sees 4 volts. What is the maximum rating here? Uh, High level input voltage, VDD plus 0 0.3, 3.6, not great. So I wouldn't do it like this. This might kill the ESP. Let's remove it. Now, if you have a very high frequency signal and you don't want to use much power on the pin, then the resistor solution might not work for you. And in this case, you could use an overdrivable CMOS chip. Chips like 74AHC00, I don't know. There are logic chips. And it's important to pick an AHC or an LVC because they have very special characteristics. You can supply them with 3.3 volts and they survive an input voltage of up to 5 volts. So this is great. On the 5 volt side, get your signal into the input of this NAND gate or whatever it is. What is this? You should pick something useful because a NAND this is not really great for this purpose. Yeah, you should probably get something like this, a buffer. This is just a buffer. There's an input and an output. It can be enabled. If the input is high, the output is high. If the input is low, the output is low. As long as this pin is high. A is connected to the 5 volt signal. Y is connected to the 3.3 volt signal, then we also have our enable pin that is permanently connected to 3.3 volts, as well as our supply voltage, which is also connected to 3.3 volts, and ground is connected to ground. This chip survives this 5 volts here and just outputs 3.3 volts. Minimum is 2, maximum is 5.3. 5 so 3.3 is great our input voltage can be somewhere between 0 and 5.5 volts so if you have a very fast signal this might be your solution to choose but how do you get from 3.3 volts to 5 volts sometimes you just connect them and they work you have to look at the input characteristics of the 5 volt system and the output characteristics of the 3.3 volt system, maybe it works. But if it doesn't, there are a few options. So the first one is to use a transistor. If you use a transistor, you have your 3.3 volt system and your 5 volt system. Get your signal, go into the gate, for example, if you use a MOSFET, that's nice. Connect it to ground and connect this end to 5 volts and use a pull-up resistor. Now this, this resistor here depends on the speed. Same story, I would pick something like 10K. 10K is great, it's a great value. If you have very high speed signals, you could use a lower resistor and you will get more current flow 
through the transistor this time. That is not as bad as high current flow through your microcontroller because you can pick a more powerful transistor if you want to. But <laughs> there is another problem here. If we input a low signal here, then the transistor will not turn on and the output will be high. <laughs> and if we input a high signal, then this transistor will turn on and the output will be connected to ground. And then this is low. So <laughs> we successfully inverted the signal. And sometimes this is not a problem. After all, it's a digital system and you just flip them and send high instead of low. If that doesn't work for you and you need the same signal, you need the same thing again. You go into your first transistor. Yeah, this is, this is wrong here. <laughs> this is a transistor. This is a transistor. 10K, 10K, high signal here. This transistor will turn on and this signal here will be low. And if the signal is low, then this transistor is not turned on and we have a high signal here. We inverted it and then we invert it back and everything is fine. And same story if we have a low signal, this is not turned on, then this is high because it's connected to this five volts here. High turns on this transistor. If this transistor is turned on, then this signal here is connected to ground, so it's low. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is to use a buffer, like in the previous example, but this time not an AHC, but an HCT. So 47 HCT, blah, blah, blah. This is what you look for because you can supply it by five volts and ground, and it will just convert 3.3 volt signals into 5 volt signals. There is one last thing that I would like to show you. That is this thing right here. You can buy level shifters that work in both directions and they consist of one transistor and two resistors. They're pretty cool, but not perfect, of course. So it comes with some limitations. The way they work is you have your low level input for example, 3.3 volts, and you want to convert it into 5 volts. So if a low level input, it goes into a transistor, pull up resistor to 5 volts, pull up resistor to 3.3 volts. So this should be a different symbol. <laughs> 10K, 10K, I would say. The gate is also connected to 3.3 volts. One thing about this NMOS transistors here, is that there is a parasitic diode inside. If you output a high signal here, 3.3 volts, then this has a pull-up resistor, so we have five volts here, which is a high signal. If this is low, then we will have a voltage difference between gate and source, and this transistor will turn on. And if this transistor turns on, then both of these sides are basically connected low in this case here. In the opposite direction, if the 5 volt system outputs a high signal here, then there is this pull up resistor that pulls this side also up. And if we output a low signal here, then this diode conducts and we get around 0.7 volts here. And this means that this transistor turns on and then this is low again. So it works in both ways. It's not the fastest circuit. So if you have very high frequencies, you might run into some issues. If this video was helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe and hype. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Where did he go? He was just sitting here. No idea, boss. We haven't called cut. Keep rolling. Someone find him.